But we live here in this country where people are vying for the attention of everybody and not just us. So either we're going to have our own political party that speaks for us, because obviously they know the power of the black vote, or else Tom Steyer wouldn't be backing his ass up with you now, <laughs> and you wouldn't have all this other stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? But it just goes to show you they know the power of the black vote, but look at the tactics that they're using to try to get the black votes. Like, we're stupid enough. To fall for that. Fall for that. But let, let me finish. hip-hop is so easy. No, no hip-hop is not that easy, you know, and, that, and, that, and that's the problem. Like, this same hip-hop music used to be vilified for its content and lyrics. Now you're using it to garner votes, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders using Public Enemy. You know, um, this guy, I don't even know his name. He was a latecomer. Tom, what, how Tom you say? Steyer. Steyer is using Juvenile. And there's no doubt that, and we've seen it with the election of Barack Obama, that um, hip-hop can change the political landscape. You know what I mean? Because we went out in droves in numbers. But we're not stupid. You know what I mean? That's why Kamala Harris ain't get the vote. That's why Joe Biden is not getting the vote. Let me tell you why Joe Biden won in Alabama and South Carolina is because there are a lot of those civil rights leaders, you know, and many of them, it's sad to say, is a part of the uh, political establishment, and, and a lot of them are, are handkerchief-head Negroes that no matter who is the front-runner, as long as they're Democrat, they're going to go with that party line. And that's sad, you know, because Joe Biden, he, he hasn't done nothing significantly for black people, he doesn't have a black agenda, so why give him the vote? So now, I asked my father. Yeah. And I I understand what you're saying, and I I asked him that because I I couldn't understand because I'm just like, please, nobody's really gonna vote for Joe Biden, right? Clearly. Nah, them but older black people. My, my they. I don't want to say, I don't want to call them names because. In the in the media lately, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that, but I, I wouldn't I, be me if media, I didn't. In the media lately, I've seen them call them uninformed voters. Uh, they've just given them all these names. These are the people that listen. I was with one of the. I was sat right next to one of the foot soldiers at that church that day. My father grew up in Jim Crow, right here in Wilkes County, Jim Crow South. The laws that were passed, if they didn't affect them. We have no, we can't understand like how bad it was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it was fucked up for them. They couldn't go and sit and do and the things that we were able to do with the police on our ass. They we did it, mm -hmm. but they couldn't even do it at all. You know what I mean? They tried to intimidate us out of doing it, and we weren't having it. We grew up in the fight the power generation with public enemy. You know what I mean? But they, the laws literally said they could not do it. Right? They were literally lynched. They were literally taken downtown. They had a day of the week that they would take the, the local, the most popular criminal down and hang them in the middle of, that, that, was, that was the entertainment of the town. Like, I, I, I get it. So my dad, even though these laws were, he couldn't do shit, he had to go to Vietnam and fight for this country. So I'm reluctant to call them un uninformed voters. I'm reluctant to call them you know, and say that they are less informed or ignorant because they actually lived it. The reason why they're voting like this is because they witnessed firsthand more than us maybe because we created this own, our own world that we could live in. But they understand that we have to come together with people that might not be black but understand what black people are going through and they're willing to work with us. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I think but that's, that's not that's Joe Biden. From. That's not Joe Biden. But I don't know him, but what about the people that he could bring to his cabinet? The people that he could bring to the government? <sighs> I don't, I, I get, like I said, all three of them to me are that's on the why, same. That's why Joe Biden winning because you, it's people still on that Obama hope. You yeah, still expecting like, Obama yo, out of Joe Biden. Yeah. Listen, Just listen. Look at his policy. It's about policies. Like let me let me tell you something, right? If we gotta endure four more years of Trump, then so be it. Like, listen, we are resilient people. If yeah. we survive yeah, slavery, Jim Crow, four more years of Trump is not gonna kill us, people. But within those four years, we have to start vetting candidates now. Bringing someone that we know this is the one. You know what I mean? Like, 
there's a senator, there's somebody, there, there might be even a, a congress member, there might be someone there that's might be on somebody the school walking board down the street that has the tenacity to fight, that want to be on the right side of history, and we need to start with them right now. It, it, it's a wrap for 2020. Joe, but to, in my opinion, Joe Biden is going to get it because the Democrat Party, you know, they're going to choose who the front runner is going to be, and it's not going to be Bernie, and um, that's who we're going to have to deal with to. Go against Trump, and if he wins, he wins. But if not, then it's gonna be Trump. So what but about the what about the older black people that say, when it comes down to stuff like this, we are torn. Our generation is definitely torn away from them, and the generation under that and under that, like we're just totally we are separated from that generation. What do you say to the people in that generation that say, you know what? When it's time for stuff like this, black people scream, we're not a monolith. But at the times like this, white people say, whatever is in our own interest, we don't give a fuck. We'll settle the rest later. We're standing behind this person. And that's the only reason why and how yeah, Trump got elected. You, you, said, you, said, you said the right thing. White mm -hmm. people said what's in our best interest. Black people can't say what's in our best interest because he's not in our best interest. If yeah. it was, you know, if it was somebody that we'd be like, well, you know, we're not, remember, we're not looking for a Messiah. We're not looking no, for No, we're Jesus. not looking for, we no. look, Somebody, they're going to have some type of baggage with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. You know, yes. but he got too much baggage, you know. So I, I just think that in, in, in 2024, the Democrats is going to know that you can't just have 15 people on stage and it's like throwing everything on the wall and see what sticks. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that was another thing. It, it, it was disunity. You know, how many Republicans was was there? How many, anybody know how many Republicans um, is... Are running yeah. right now? Um, I think the guy that was running against Trump dropped out. Let me check. Yeah, but, see? But uh, I, I, so, I so, think so, that so it's see just how, him. how they get on cold. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. But he represents their interests. We don't have... We would get on cold, too, if we had somebody that represent our interests. Who has the black agenda? Nobody. They will tell you Pacific. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in favor of studying H.R. 40. Study it. It, 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 it been for 40 years. Right. Y'all yeah. didn't finish studying it? Right. So guess what? I'm still studying the vote and who I'm going to vote for. <laughs> Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, until y'all get that, y'all studying HR 40, well, I'm still studying who I'm going to vote okay. for. Okay, wait a minute. So I want to ask you a question. If there were a candidate that said, you know what, yeah, we, we did enough studying, reparations are for African descendants of slaves only, period, boom, bap, and come sign up and get your check. How do you even go? Where do you go to even find out if you are an African descendant of a slave? There's, 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 uh, some, well, I, I don't know about everybody else, but. But do you think I'm that those are the only people that should hope. get it? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. A D O S period. Everybody, every, everybody else, you know what I mean, got reparations. And see, and that's the, the, the sad part about it. Um, Kamala Harris, even though she said that um, she will not do nothing specifically. For um, uh, uh, African uh, American descendants of slaves or whatever, mm -hmm. soon as she lost, her, she 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 started uh, campaigning for the um, the LBG Quality Act, and you know, which is another bill that's reparation that's for them, you know. So it's just you know people, and and, and most of her campaign was supported by them, so. It just goes to show you that when you vet these politicians, you can't just say, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. You have to put your money and your, your political clout behind them. Um, to answer your question, so Donald Trump, right now, the delegate count for him is 833. Someone named Bill Weld is running with Never him. Never heard of him. He's got one delegate. <laughs> so, I mean, it's clearly that's his, it's that's, a open that's case, and so they don't have the problem coach. that we have. We don't, they don't have the problems that we have with picking somebody and, and, and going with that. And that's the Democratic Party. Because they, you know, Nancy Pelowski, whatever, she should have sat them in the room and been like, listen, you... 
But I think you're she playing, did, because look what you're, happened you're, this week. Yeah, you're playing game. Nah, they had to do that. A lot of them was running out of money. Super uh, Super Tuesday decides everything. And then you even see, what was it, Elizabeth Warren? She was like the last one, right? Uh, Tulsi Gabbard is still in it, people. I just oh, want come to, on. She's Are you still serious? In it. Yeah. I haven't heard her name in, in like the last well, six, because no, she, six weeks. So Hillary, <laughs> a few months ago, said that Tulsi Gabbard was running a, a campaign that was basically funded by the Russians, and the Russian bots are behind it. And... Hey, if that's true... That's what Hillary said? That's what she said. And and so Tulsi wow. tried to sue her and said that it was defamation, but it never really went any further because usually when you sue somebody or you bring them to trial or to court or to any type of hearing, there has to be some proof. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you probably she didn't hear nothing from it foot. because if it's a if legal it's proceeding, they probably issue a gag order and say yeah. don't talk about All it. All that stuff. Other. But yeah, that's sad though that um she's not even mentioned. But I just think that um, they, so they need to So we do have another choice to that point. I don't know. Oh, huh? <laughs> I don't know too much about it, you know. Um, but the whole political process, man, is, is just unfortunate. And um, we starting to see that uh, it can be real... <laughs> hectic. Hectic. At you best. know what I mean? At best.